I am with the middleweight champion, Israel Adesanya, ahead of UFC 271. Izzy, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me, Caroline. Good. I want to start off by congratulating you. The news broke this morning that you've signed a new multi-contract, multi-fight deal with the UFC, making you, as I understand, one of the highest paid athletes in UFC history. It's got to feel good, hey, to start the week with sharing that news? Uh, yeah, it should feel good, but... um. I'm just focused on one thing at the moment, so it hasn't really hit me yet, but it should feel good maybe yeah. after the fight. Yeah. So obviously we've got you around for a long time in the UFC. That's good to see. And talking of the fight week itself, obviously, you know, you've got the weight cut going on now. There's a lot of media obligations, but I can see from what we've seen online, you're in this sort of big brother style house with all your team and sort of keep yourself away from it all. What's that environment like and how many of you are in this undisclosed location house? Um, there's a few of us. I know it's over ten, over ten of us, but it's a big ass house. I don't even know how many bedrooms. Um, but <laughs> I just wanted to move differently this fight week. How should it be moving this whole time? Um, and yeah, just keep the team close, keep the people that that matter to me at this moment closer to me. So yeah, um, that's what we're doing, and that's what we'll be doing uh, further on. So it's about just keeping away those outside distractions, just, you know, taking all that away. Yeah, uh, for me, pers- like, I, I don't mind being at the fighter hotel. I've always, I've always done that normally. But, um, you know, you get a few distractions once in a while. Um, certain things get delayed. If I go downstairs, it takes me probably 30 minutes to get back upstairs because, <laughs> you know. Um, but, yeah, uh, I just rather keep focused on one thing this weekend. And that's what I'm I'm doing the, this whole time. Mm, I've witnessed that with yourself and a lot of the fighters in the hotels. It's it's a it's a long time, isn't it, to just get your coffee and so forth. But go, I want to tap in. Uber Eats and it takes twenty minutes to come back up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I don't blame you keeping away from it all. I want to start by just tapping into your championship mentality. When you're in the position that you're in, where you've become the champion, you've defended multiple times, and you're now fighting rematching somebody that you beat quite convincingly before. Where does the motivation come from or what is your motivation for a fight like this? Um, for me, the motivation is beating them again um, worse than the first time. Uh, in this fight, I've put the pressure on myself where he can't win, you know. Um, and also, I, I also look forward to lapping the division again. That's another thing I look forward to doing for myself, just for my own legacy. Um, it's it's a challenge for me. So that's where the motivation is. I don't get lackluster. I don't get complacent. Um, he seems like he's accepted um, what happened to him last time. So that, that makes him dangerous to me. So, yeah, I take him seriously and I look to take him out as well. When you say beat him better than you did last time, last time you put him away in the second round. So am I assuming this is a first round prediction here? No, no, no not really. It's just more decisive. Last time I got a little mm. wild. I we didn't use our game plan because um, I, I freestyled it. I called an audible and my team trust me enough to trust my judgment when I felt like I needed to get crazy in there. So I, I got buck wild with him and it was a bit, it was a clean finish. It was a clean performance, but it was a, for me, it was a bit ugly, um, but I don't mind, you know, I love ugly, mm. but um, something reminiscent to the tough 27 finale or the Costa fight. Um, is what you're going to see come Saturday night. You know, you are your biggest critic, obviously, and I, I know you're very, very critical of yourself. And after we spoke, after your Marvin Vittori fight, we spoke probably only 30 minutes after you'd you'd come out the cage backstage. And you, you said you weren't wholly satisfied with that fight. And you kept saying to me, I wish I'd punched him in the face more. And you've talked this week about, you know, feeling boredom during your fights. Is, is there a different level of hunger now that you want to walk away feeling more satisfied with your performance than maybe you did in that last one? Um, yeah, uh, there's, I don't know what it is, but that last fight, he just, um, didn't bring the fight. Uh, so I, I go bored in there and I'm glad you remember that. I was saying, I wish I punched him in the face mm-hmm. more. Um, but yeah, this time I don't think I'm going to have that problem. This guy feels like, um, he has nothing to lose, but guess what? I'm in the same boat. I feel like I have nothing to lose because I've got bigger fish to fry. So, yeah, um, I don't think that's going to be an issue this time. That's interesting. So your your motivation is, and, and I think your teammate Dan Hooker actually said that, you know, you do feel some nerves for this fight. So that nervous energy is something that you, you see in a positive way? Yeah, 100%. I get nervous for every fight. 
it's all about how you use those nerves. The nerves are good. They're supposed to happen. It just, um, it's part of the, the, the human animals, you know, natural instincts. So you can either use it to your advantage or let it use you, you know, to your disadvantage. So yeah, I know how to use my nerves and channel it in the right way. I'm curious as well, you've talked about wanting to bring back the young Izzy. So I'm curious, mm. who who is young Izzy? What what goes through or what went through the mind of young Izzy that you've looked to bring back this time? The guy that was just having fun. Um, I was doing it in um, previous fights. Like I said, even the last fight with him, I kind of got a little bit crazy. I was the young Izzy and the, the, the wild kid. Um, but also during training, it's, it's what I'm talking about is the learning. Um, the kid that was really curious about everything, the kid that was soaking up everything that he was shown i've been i've been there the last few months you know since last year um yeah just soaking up everything i get shown especially when it comes to new aspects of this game striking and grappling that i that i haven't um seen before even using um old weapons old old things we haven't used in a, in a long time so yeah that kid that kid was uh it's still me i am that kid well, there's a lot of talk about how, you know, Rob's come on the last three fights, three consecutive wins since he lost to you. And a lot of people are, are talking about that. But yourself, you've grown as a fighter in that time. You know, you've far from stood still. You've tested yourself at 205. You you went on to defend again your middleweight title last time out. What do you think has been your biggest growth? My my biggest growth has been personal. My biggest growth has been maturity as a person, um, learning myself, my flaws and fixing them you know uh also accepting who i am this is a yeah it's, it takes a skill to do that it takes a strong character mm -hmm. to be able to see those things in yourself and also try and amend them so yeah it's not really anything to do with fighting but i guess it is because life is a fight what do you make of this narrative that in order to beat you, it's replicating what Jan Blachowicz did? Obviously, that was at 205. You know, a lot of a lot of media, a lot of people say, no, oh, you just got to take Izzy down in the center of the, the cage and, and get it done. Obviously, that sounds like a lot harder than than it sounds. But um, yes. do, do you like that people think it's that simple? Yeah, I hope they do. I hope they think it's, um, yeah, it's easier said than done. I hope, it, that, I hope they think it's just as simple as that. But I'll tell you, there's many ways to beat me. There's many ways to skin a cat. <laughs> I'm, I'm a human being, you know, I know my flaws, but um, when you step in that octagon with me, it's a whole different story. I mean, the last time he was saying, or oh, Kelvin Gastelum showed the game plan on how to be Izzy, he tried to copy his homework and he failed. So now he's going to try and copy Jan's homework and he's going to fail miserably. But yeah, um, there's many ways to beat me other than just taking me down, even striking. But um, this is what I mean when I talk about being vulnerable and being smart enough to realize that I know what I have to work on as a person. When I watch my fights back, I know, okay, this is how, if I was fighting me, I would beat me this way. I would take me out this way. So yeah, I know how to beat myself and I'm the only one who can. Mm. But do you think Rob's maybe your toughest test in the division right now? I mean, he also, obviously the number one contender. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. There's a few guys I haven't fought yet, um, you know, but... Yeah, we'll see. Right now, he's the number one contender, rightfully mm. so. So, um, according to everyone, yes. And they wanted this fight, so I gave him this fight. I'm a generous guy. How do you feel about representing New Zealand at the moment? I mean, you know, ordinarily, you're very proud to, to represent New Zealand in your fight. Obviously, the, it's been New Zealand versus Australia has been the, you know, the narrative when yourself and Robert Whittaker have fought. But you, you've said recently mm. you're not you're not feeling too too good towards that. Oh, no, I mean, it's just, you know, it's well known with what they did last year um, to Dan Hooker, of all people, who wears the country's flag on his back when he walks out there. The way they treated him when he needed um, them the most, uh, not the people, by the way, you know, I'm not talking about the people, I'm talking about the, mm. you know, sports ad administrations. Officials. Who were granting, mm. Yeah, the officials who were granting the All Blacks and the, the netball teams and other people privileges that they weren't granting our teams to train. You know, the same thing we did in, in the Costa fight with quarantine in the gym, it was fine, it was okay. And this time they were like, no, we've changed the rules. And it's like, you mm -hmm. guys keep moving the goalpost, but then you keep giving these other guys privileges that we're not uh, we're not allowed. So yeah, that <laughs> but um, yeah, I represent myself and I represent anyone who fucks with me from any part of the world. That's it. Yeah. 
So I'm going to, t- going to ask you about something now. Obviously, you're very proud of your, your African representation as well. Yourself, mm-hmm. Kamara Usman, Francis Ngannou, the three kings, as you call yourself. And mm-hmm. Kamara Usman's manager, Ali, has come out and said he wants Usman to go up to, to middleweight and fight you. The opportunity to be a two-division world champion. I think sort of saying in Mike Tyson's words, you know, like the, the money fight, etc., would you ever even entertain that, the two of you? Have you had a sort of conversation between the two of you to say, it's would we ever record. do this? It's, it's been on record. I said I, I wouldn't want it. He said he doesn't okay. want it. But, you know, you don't always get what you want. So Ali should just be quiet once in a while. He talks too much a little bit. And he knows how to contact me directly if he wants to speak to me. He doesn't have to go on Twitter or whatever. I don't know why the guy does that. He can just talk to me directly if he needs to. But, yeah, um, it's been on record. Me and Kamara said we don't desire to do that because it's greater for it's bigger than just money it's bigger than us it's it's this is for a whole nation so mm. yeah um what ali saying is light heavyweight still in your future plans is that desire to be a double weight world champion still part of your future plans yeah that's another side mission i'll, I'll attempt um later on down the track but right now i'm focused on 185 that's my this yeah. is my division so yeah i'm gonna rule it are there any other fighters in the middleweight division at this point that, that you know, could be exciting fights for you? Definitely. I mean, we have, um, you know, uh, last week and Sean Strickland just won. Um, I don't know if he's quite there yet, but we'll see. Um, it was a, what I heard was a lackluster victory, even though it's still a victory. Um, and we have um, the Brunson and Cannoneer fight on the card. So yep. we'll see how they show out. I mean, I've been hoping for Cannonier to show out so he can get that shot, but mm. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, obviously the winner of that fight is likely to be next. Sean Strickland as a as a character, though, he's a he's a he's an interesting guy. You know, I think it would be a fun build up the two of you fighting one another. So you think maybe one more fight for him and he could be poised in that position? You'd like that fight? Yeah, I mean, I'll fight anyone, you know. So yeah, I'll make a lot of money. I know that. I like money. Cheddar makes it better. But of course, this weekend is your focus and it's Robert Whittaker, UFC 271. Is there anything, we, we know you're a born entertainer. Is there anything we can look forward to from you in terms of the walkout? I've seen the toenail paint and the, the fingernail paint. That was, let's have a look. I stay drippy. That. Uh, no, it's just for Very myself. Very nice. I like, I like being classy. The drip tips. Um, no, it's just business as usual. The last time I fought Robert, the, the, the event was, the magnitude of the event was too big for me not to show out. So... Yeah, and no, no one was expecting anything like that from myself. So that's what made it spectacular was the surprise factor, the the wow factor. So this time, I'm feeling like Fire Island, man. Just walk in there and handle business like a, like like an assassin. You're very, as I'm talking to you, you're very level at the moment. You seem very composed, very calm. At what point does that switch go on? Because you can't keep the adrenaline high the whole week. You'd be fatigued. But at what point for you does that turn on? Maybe backstage. Um, I'm going to go early to watch my boy uh, Blood Diamond fight. Uh, so I'm going to be there from the first fight of the night. And probably when the pay-per-view starts, that's when I'll probably switch on properly. But I'll have moments like at the press conference and the stare down, weigh at the stare down, backstage at the weigh I'll have moments. But I have to just practice patience because I, I can't, you know, I can't blow my load too quickly. So I just got to chill and let it happen. <laughs> Do you expect it to be quite civil between yourself and Rob? I mean, you know, there's no love loss there, of, of, of course, mm. but um, things have been said before. But what are you expecting this time around when you guys come face to face this week? I expect the unexpected. I'm ready for anything. So, yeah, I keep that thing on me. I stay strapped. There you go. And before I let you go, I just want to get a prediction from you if you're kind enough to share. Prediction. There's three ways this fight could end. And to find out, head to my YouTube channel on Freestyle Bender to find out. Well, I love all the content you've been producing of your own. Absolutely fantastic. And appreciate you talking to us here at BT Sport. We'll look out for you this Saturday night. Go well.